I just said that on a historic vision, a set of new goals, and it's crucial that we look back and say, what did we learn? Uh, what did we do wrong? Uh, and how can we thereby uh, do better uh, in the future? The MDGs have been a tremendous success, raising attention, putting awareness, focusing our efforts, bringing the UN family together, uh, creating stronger uh, impact for citizens. Uh, I think there's no doubt uh, about it. Uh, and that is also why um, the current Danish development minister, together with his eight uh, predecessors, and I'm one of them, uh, we have nominated the MDGs uh, formally uh, to uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, because we do believe uh, that the MDGs, uh, with all they have achieved, um, are core to, uh, to, uh, to create peace and, and progress for citizens uh, all over uh, the world. So we have nominated them, and, and we hope uh, the nomination uh, committee will take it into account in, uh, in, in their deliberations towards the next uh, Nobel Peace Prize. We've learned a lot throughout uh, the past uh, 15 uh, years. Uh, perhaps I should remind you, and those of you who have been part of these efforts, uh, how it started. Uh, it started with a strong focus uh, on fast tracks and quick wins. That was the entire uh, focus in the, in the first uh, years. And well, to put it a little bit on the edge, it was about handing out mosquito nets and condoms and vitamin pills uh, to people uh, and do it uh, all kinds of structures outside the government in order to get uh, quick wins. Those were the quick wins, you know, mosquito nets, uh, condoms, uh, vitamin pills. Those, if you read the reports from back then, you would be astonished to see the, the focus in, in, in the early years. And it was doing so in countries with fairly good governance. That was the entire focus also. Let's focus on the fast tracks. That's the fast tracks. The quick wins were the mosquito nets and the, and the fast tracks were countries uh, that were doing fairly well already. Because there we could achieve uh, much faster results focusing on good governance uh, and, uh, and on those countries where the conditions were, were fairly easy. And let me then remind you what our focus is today. Our almost entire focus is on state building and peace building in fragile countries. Uh, that's a huge focus of the international development uh, efforts. Uh, state building is not a quick win, I can tell you, uh, having been <laughs> part of a, a state uh, structure and a, and a government. State building is really long investment in, in structures and, uh, and in, in, in building a state that can deliver to its, its citizens. Uh, and fragile countries are not fast tracks. We can achieve enormous results in, in, if you look what we can do, because some of these countries, of course, you have the most devastatingly poor people, uh, and thereby, if we can do just a little bit, we can really fast track their development. But, but, but in terms of the original uh, understanding of the word fast track, we are in an entirely different place today in how we deal uh, with development uh, issues. And, and in the beginning, almost all attention was on social issues. Right. It was on the social and key poverty uh, indicators. For good reasons, uh, it is a key focus. It's an important place to start. But today, we know that we have to focus, as Amina Mohammed said it also, on all three legs of sustainable development, or even four legs, I would say. Uh, the, the social issues are crucial still. Environmental issues, uh, which we know uh, we need to give them much more attention. Uh, the economic uh, issues are crucial. Jobs, growth uh, must be the driver uh, of development. And then the fourth leg, which I would call it the peace leg, uh, we know how important uh, it is today. Um, because we know natural um, uh, and man made disasters can wipe out progress uh, uh, within seconds, uh, days, weeks. So all three or four dimensions of sustainable development has to be there. So actually, if you look at these past 15 years, there's been an enormous change in thinking about how do we really achieve uh, the goals and achieve sustainable development. It is important, therefore, to look back and to learn from what we did. And that's at the exact focus of the report we have in front of us. Uh, and, uh, and these are then lessons from our region, from the ECE region. Uh, and we thank the UNDP and the entire UN family for good cooperation in making this uh, report. Uh, it is looking back uh, and it is uh, looking on how have we then specifically, what have we learned from our attempt to monitor and implement this very complex development agenda that the NCGs uh, represented. In our region, it's been a little bit difficult because now the SDGs will be transformative and universal and they will affect each and every country in the ECE uh, region. 
Yeah, and that agenda is already there. Heaps of governments in our region are already preparing themselves in order to uh, uh, to meet uh, the targets and the goals in the in the future uh, post-2015 development agenda. It will be relevant for each and every country, rich and poor, east and west, north and south in our region. But the MDGs were not seen as, as relevant for our region and for all countries uh, in the region. Uh, um, Sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for not as, as good uh, reasons. Uh, so, but a number of our countries in our region, uh, th those uh, with development uh, challenges uh, that are larger than others, uh, have done their best to implement them. But in doing so, they had to transform them into something that, fit, that fitted their national circumstances. Because in many countries, it had to do with special parts of the population, vulnerable people, vulnerable parts of the country. So the global MDG goals were translated into a national agenda. And that is very important to learn from this exercise. How do you take a global goal and transform it into something relevant for your country? Here we can learn a lot, and the country experiences here shows us how it can be done. It also shows us uh, that, that, uh, that this can be creating some difficulties because then how do you monitor, how do you review, how do you add it together if they are transformed into local goals and targets? Uh, it can be difficult to monitor, it can be difficult to review uh, progress. And that is shown by the report. We must get this right with the SDGs. Translate them into something national, but maintain that we can add it up and we can monitor and we can review uh, along uh, the way. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, this, is, uh, uh, this should guide us uh, in, in, in the future these experiences. We see from the report that the, one of the key weak elements have been our data statistical uh, uh, framework to monitor. Uh, and, and there are still huge uh, issues uh, there. Um, one good example is perhaps, uh, or bad example, is when it comes to violence against women. Uh, statistics data in our region uh, is still extremely poor. Uh, in many countries we don't know the extent of violence against uh, women, it's based on anecdotes and newspaper articles and attacks on individuals, but we don't have core statistics that can really show us where are the problems uh, and how do we address them. Uh, it's a good example of lack of data in, in the future uh, SDG agenda. So we need the data revolution, we've seen the report and it is really underlined by this report as well, a data revolution and it must have three elements. First of all, developing new data methodology. We host a conference of European statisticians in, in, uh, in, in ECE, and they have developed new, the first ever, uh, recommendations on climate statistics, new recommendations on gender statistics. So we need methodologically to, to build new statistical recommendations on how do we monitor. Uh, secondly, we need uh, to use uh, big data in an entirely new way. Uh, and. Uh, um, when I met the Conference of European Statisticians, I said, why don't you form a partnership with Google and NSA? They have a lot of data, I know. But of course, uh, you can smile about it, but, but it has to be done in, in a way. All the big data out there, but we need to transform big data into useful data and qualitative data, because big data can also, uh, out of, out of the quality of it can be very uh, uh, debatable. Uh, but it has to be done, and there are all kinds of good examples out there in the world where you do it, uh, crowdsourcing, uh, using all kinds of uh, satellite uh, images, uh, tweeting, uh, you know. There's an epidemic here in Geneva right now, uh, in influenza. I have it uh, myself, sorry, I hope you will keep a distance. <laughs> but you can monitor this by seeing, seeing tweets uh, on, on, on